What's up folks, Spencer here with another lesson of React Native School. Today I wanted to talk to you about my code push strategy. Uh, I've been using code push basically since it first came out in nearly every app I work on. Uh, I use it pretty in a, a minor capacity, but it is very valuable. And I want to show you how I've kind of developed a system that works really well for me and you may find valuable as well. So this lesson is going to assume you have installed code push. CodePush has great documentation on how to actually do that, so I won't be covering it here. I'll just be talking strategy. So basically the way I've got it set up here is I've got my application. This would be the actual app, the navigation, all of that. And at the top of it, right next to it as a sibling, I've got the CodePush manager. And it's important you want CodePush to initialize as soon as your app loads, even if it's not completely loaded, if it's sitting on a loading screen. And that's based off the way that CodePush works. Uh, you need to notify it that the app is ready to go as, as soon as it opens. That way it knows that this was a successful update and it won't roll back to the previous one. And that'll be more important later on with a change that we'll be making. So with that said, let's actually look at this code push manager. That's just the way I like to name this component. Um, it's just a normal React component. Only difference here is that it just returns null. It's not doing any UI thing, uh, but it is actually calling different code push functions. And the reason I do it as a separate component is just to kind of keep this root level component clutter free. Maybe there's other configuration we need to do. Uh, I like to keep those separate. So if I ever have these management components, I like to just create a separate component that returns null, doesn't affect the UI in any way, but we can hook into different lifecycle methods if we need to. So by default, code push is actually going to use one key. When you sign up, create your account, you're going to get a staging lane and a production lane. You can add more later on if you want to. And when you actually go through the code push configuration process, you're going to go ahead and actually set a key within the info.p list or a, a similar file in Android. Uh, but what we want to do is make it dynamic. So what we're going to build is basically a process where someone can sign up as a beta tester. If they're a beta tester, then we're going to go ahead and point them to using the staging key and a slightly different user experience. Or by default, they'll just use a production key and just kind of get those production updates. So in practice, what we want to do is basically disable the automatic code push check that's going to happen. To do that, you're going to pass a parameter to this code push function, which I've just gone ahead and imported from React Native code push. And to do that, you can just go ahead and set the check frequency to be the code push dot check frequency dot manual. And that's going to mean we only check whenever we want to. Then going into our component did mount, what we want to do is as soon as the app loads, because we're now checking manually and we're not hooking into the default system that code push has here, we need to go ahead and tell code push that our application is ready. So we can call notify app ready. And then this is going to return a promise. So we can go ahead and tack into this chain with a dot then. And while we add that first dot then, let's go ahead and add a catch and just say an error occurred with code push. And we'll go ahead and log that out. Always best practice when you're using promises to always have a then and a catch. Okay, next thing we need to do is actually check are they a beta tester or not. Uh, to do that, I typically store this in async storage. I'll go ahead and create a new function We'll call this const check if beta tester. And I'm going to use async await here. And we can go ahead and pull a response off of async storage. We'll need to await this. We'll await async storage. Let's just say my app is beta tester. And the way I typically do this uh, on most of my apps is I have like a hidden double tap somewhere in there where you can go and enable code push. Um, it just makes it easy for a user to opt into that. And it just kind of makes it a little bit hidden. Uh, just so basically people who don't need to be beta testers don't have to worry about it. You can communicate that. But anyways, I end up storing that in async storage. And we actually want to get this item from async storage. So we'll call async storage dot get item. And then we want to check, is this response equal to true? because being in async storage, it is going to uh, be a string and we want to return a Boolean from here. And this should actually be a return. 
Okay, so what we can do now is we've gone ahead and notified code push that the app is ready. That's going to keep it from rolling back. And then we want to go ahead and return the result of check if beta tester. This is going to be a promise. So we can go ahead and add another then in here. This is going to return if they are a beta tester. If they are a beta tester, that's going to be one path. Otherwise, we need to go a different route. So what I'll do is actually create another object up here, and I'm going to call this code push keys. And that's just going to be an object that has staging keys, which we'll just set as an object, and then it's going to have production keys. Okay, because we want to use different keys for the different platforms. Now the other factor is you're going to have different keys for iOS and Android. They're separate apps within Code Push. So we're going to have a iOS and an Android for each one of these. To make it easy to actually select this, what we can do is go from React Native. We can import the platform package. And using platform, we can go ahead and say platform.select, which is then going to take an object. In that object, we can go ahead and pass the keys iOS and Android. If it's iOS, code push keys.staging is going to return the iOS value. Code push keys.staging on Android is going to return the Android value. So we'll just go ahead and stub some keys in here. Go ahead, do the same thing for production. Okay, and we've got our keys set up. So now we know we've got our code push keys and we know if they're a beta tester or not. If they're not a beta tester, we basically want to emulate exactly what was happening before, which is a background update uh, to our application. So to do that, all we need to do is say code push dot sync, which is the same thing. Basically code push this function down here is just going to call notify app ready and then code push sync. The only difference we want to do here is actually specify what deployment key it should use. So to do that, all we can do is pass an object to code push sync, pass in the deployment key, and then we just want to go ahead and reference the pertinent code push key. So that's going to be code push keys dot production. iOS, it'll use the iOS production key. Android, it'll use the Android production key. Basically, we're circumventing all the native changes we've done uh, by actually passing the deployment key. We don't need to necessarily worry about what that key is that's stored in the native code because we've got it set up here. Alternatively, we can go ahead and say the same thing for a beta tester. We can say code push .sync. We're going to go ahead and pass the deployment key and we can use code push keys dot staging here. And then I'll go ahead, you can deploy to staging, test it out with your beta testers, and then you can go ahead and promote that to production. Now, Code push sync by default is very passive. It's all going to happen in the background when a user is not at using the app and it'll apply it when they next reopen the app. But for our beta testers, we want to make it a little bit more clear. Hey, there's an update available. We want to get it into the hands of everyone as soon as possible. To do that, there's a few more configuration options you can pass to code push sync. And I want to preface this by saying using these, you want to be careful with this, especially in Apple. They can be a little, uh, weird about any sort of updates that are happening. Since it's beta testers that are using this, I'm okay with using it, uh, using these uh, more forward approaches to pushing this over the air update on them. But you want to be really, really mindful of what exactly you're doing with this. One of those, okay, is going to be the update dialog. You can go ahead and pass update dialog. That's going to give the user uh, an alert that there's an update available and what's changed if you've added those notes. That way they can go ahead, press download it immediately rather than it happening passively in the background. They can opt in and download that immediately. The next thing we want to do is set the install mode to code push dot install mode dot immediate. And what this immediate install mode is going to do is actually, as soon as they press this update dialog, you know, download the update, once that's down, down, done downloading, it's going to restart the app. That can be a jarring experience if someone isn't expecting that. So you want to be careful of that uh, for your typical production one. So whenever I use an install mode of immediate, I like to 
put that alongside an update dialog of true, uh, just so they have to opt into downloading it. And then it'll immediately restart it. And this is a code push process that I found works really well uh, for small teams, even a larger team or uh, community, a tight knit community where people want the most bleeding edge stuff. Uh, tell them how to enable beta mode. And then you can use code push to actually go push updates to them pretty often uh, so that they can go and actually test and try out these different implementations. So I hope you found that quick little lesson valuable on my strategy towards code push. I'd, I'd definitely suggest giving it a shot because it does speed up the iteration time with uh, kind of your more tight knit beta testing community within your application. So thanks for watching this and I'll see you in the next lesson.